Hello and welcome to a real short video. I've been thinking about removing the battery from my VTVM and putting a battery eliminator in there for the ohms setting so I can stop worrying about leaking batteries destroying that VTVM especially after the extensive work I went to restore that one back to operating condition after a leaking battery. I have a whole video on how I had to replate the chassis and everything else in there. But at any rate, I went online to investigate some of the battery eliminator circuits and just see some of the pros and cons about the different circuits that are out there. And they're not very complex, they're pretty simple. But I was reading one of the threads on one of the forums and there's so much bad information out there. Some guy asked a question, he said, I have a model 249, which is what I just showed you, ICO VTVM, and he said, I've found a Heathkit battery eliminator. Will it work? And his the reply was, oh sure, they're all the same circuit. Go ahead, the Heathkit one will work fine. That is wrong on so many levels. This unit has a full, full wave uh, bridge rectifier. You put that in this 249 or even my Heathkit IM13 VTVM and you're going to destroy the filament transformer. They pick up the voltage from the filament transformer, they're putting it through a bridge rectifier. Well, one leg of this filament transformer is grounded. And if you ground the negative side, if your negative side of your battery is grounded, kiss your filament transformer goodbye, and I wish you luck finding another one. And I, I know, the guys are going to come out of the weird world, oh, they're everywhere. No, they are not. Not in the form factor that will fit inside these VTVMs. What you're going to have to use is one with a half-wave rectifier. Now, both of my VTVMs, my 249, you see one side of the filament transformer here, is grounded and it's grounded here and it's grounded on this tube this IM13 there's three filaments there's two in one of the tubes anyway it's referenced to ground now you can lift that ground and probably get away with it but you may have problems on the lower voltage rating uh, settings it's there for noise elimination. Now if your particular VTVM does not have a ground reference on the filament transformer, you can go ahead and use the one with the bridge rectifier in it. But if you do have a grounded filament winding, you're going to have to go with the half wave rectifier circuit. Now this circuit is available, just do a search for battery eliminator on VTVM, I don't know what link I found this on. There's hundreds of them out there. Dead simple, a 317 regulator, a handful of capacitors, and a trim pot. But make sure that whatever battery eliminator, oh and they sell these things on eBay, there's a guy selling kits, assembled things for 13 bucks, which is reasonable. You probably can't buy the parts for $13. Just make damn sure that the unit you're putting in there, if your filament transformer has a grounded winding or it's referenced to ground, you cannot use the one with the bridge rectifier. You will have to go with one with a half wave rectifier. Save your filament transformer. And another suggestion is if your set has a, uh, like a number 47 pilot light, like my, my model 249 has one of those beautiful little red jewel pilot lights. Well, when I put the battery eliminator in there, I am going to take out the incandescent and I'm going to replace it with one of these LEDs uh, just to reduce the load on the filament winding. Most of those transformers are pretty well stressed because they're so small. This draws 14 milliamp years versus 150 for another uh, for a number 47 pilot light. So whatever load the regulator is adding I'll compensate for it by throwing one of these LED lamps in. 
that's it short and sweet don't burn up your filament transformer make sure that your filament transformer is not grounded if you're using one with a bridge rectifier if you've got the grounded filament transformer you need this the half wave rectifier version see ya